Hey everybody and welcome back. Well, you can hear the heat in the background because it's still bloody cold here. It's well below freezing even during the day. So everything is as it was last week. As I mentioned we had that snow and freezing rain so I've got sort of a solid inch and a half of basically just ice all the way up the drive. It's further getting down here to, to the workshop. Alright, so can I think of anything that I have to mention? Sort of housekeeping? Don't think so. Get lots of comments about all sorts of stuff, so keep them coming. Right then, uh, what we're going to do this week is. Oh, I've just been ordering things because I didn't have the rubbers for the tank, so I'm going to have to try and find somewhere else to get them. I don't like to get stuff other places because my normal supplier um, still lets me have my business account so it's a 30% discount which is very nice. But anyway, what we're going to do I think is the front mud guard, I'm going to make up some stairs and I've got something to show you on that and hopefully the things I forgot to order last week will arrive so I'll have the other bits for the hydraulics. So we'll probably make the bracket up and various bits and pieces for the back brake which I would think will take all of this week because I'm not only going to make the bracket for the master cylinder I've got to make the actual activating rod and the little bit to go on the, the uh, foot brake lever so we'll get all that done something just came to me then that I should mention oh yeah I know what it was um, I noticed that the videos get longer and longer and longer I have a friend who has trouble sitting for an hour and uh, this last one I think was only 40 odd minutes but it's, it's sort of difficult to balance the two I don't like to stop things halfway through a job so in other words like to say I'll say we'll do the, the front mud guard I want to get that all done but I don't want to miss bits out I don't like to show you the boring bits but you know it's really a juggle to get it, it right so you keep me straight I know the vast majority of you don't mind them being a bit longer but anyway just tell me if you have any problem with the longer ones or the shorter ones or whether I should just you know go until I've got 40 minutes and then knock off and put the rest in the next week whatever anyway having said all that let's get on and I'll show you something that I've made for doing these front mudguard stairs right well mudguard stairs a tube generally now this is the C15 and uh, these have got ends on them but not on the ends actually are made of tube which slides over that but if you just trap the ends in the vise you get you not only get a nasty square end to here but also what tends to happen is they'll squish up to one side whereas this is the flat piece here is nicely in the middle when you look down this line here if you were looking from the front if you just squish them up in the vise or uh, in a press or whatever they always look nasty so there is actually like a little former to make these and for years I've been going to make one and I thought you know what I'm going to do it I'm going to make a former so let me show you what I made right well so this is what I made okay what I did was I started with a block and I'm using half inch tube so I drilled halfway down with a half inch drill and the half inch drill was nice because of course it gives me my sort of rounded finish so the idea is you stick your tube in all the way to the end put that on that on hang on, won't go on now you put that on oh. I unfortunately haven't got another straight bit to hand put that on, there we go and it starts to squish that end right you're moving out the camera a little bit 
it starts to squish this and it squishes it down until it gets to there now I did a test piece oh there's the other end of this which was reasonably straight and as you can see we've got our rounded piece in what it isn't doing perfectly is squishing it up what I would like to do is put a piece of flat inside there but I can't think how to get it in because obviously I want it that width but it's not that width until it's squished up so I might think about that a little bit more I know I might put a, a slot in this end that I can put it in or actually I don't even know if I really need this end on the sides that help this to slide down straight when it's in the press but that's it it works the majority of the time what may make it work perfectly actually is if I heat this I'm thinking of that I'll see if I can find another straight piece of scrap and uh, heat it up and then press it then of course it'll form a lot a lot better but anyway there's the little former could be making one of these for ages I've thought of making one so as I say it's not quite 100% right yet but we'll uh, we'll persevere with that I have just had one thought about this thing where I may have slipped up that's a half inch hole which is right for the tube see why is it when I'm trying to tell you things nothing goes right so that goes in there like see and it closes up but of course it can't close up all that way because we've got this back there now this is 16th wall so that means that when this is squished down on the back there's going to be an eighth of an inch gap so maybe what I should have done after I'd split this in two was then mill off it a sixteenth on each side well actually slightly less than a sixteenth because there's the thickness of the uh, the slitting saw that I used to cut that and then that would mean that when these two were completely together that would close up well no it wouldn't close up would it does that make any difference to it I don't know as I say it's a work in progress we'll press on with it right then while we think about the press tool we'll get on with this okay I've put some foam under here tape these to give myself a little bit of space under there now there were several ways I could do this I could get some flat about inch wide flat like this tape is and make a piece that goes underneath on the inside of the mudguard weld it on bolt it on whatever so that we had ears and then make some tubes from there to there problem with that is that we've got a point where we can move here and we're going to have a point where we can move there so I'd rather have it rigid gives it less chance of moving around I mean it can still if it's just fastened there to there and there to there it can still swivel on these to a certain extent before one stops the motion of the other the only way around that of course is to have a piece which we could do once it's all on have a piece which actually links the two you know like the trials mudguard ones would be fastened here and go from there to there but they would be fastened so they couldn't swivel you know on two two bolts rather than being on one each all right so what are we going to do i think what we're going to do is put this in the tube bender and make a loop now the tube bender has a four and a half inch radius now that's on the center line of the tube so the tube being half inch that means the center line is a quarter inch away from the inside so if that center line is four and a half inches it means the inside of the tube the inside of the curve is going to be four and this mudguard is four and a quarter inches wide 
so we may have to I don't know we'll either squeeze it in a little bit or when we make the bend depends on where the bend goes anyway we'll we'll do one and see how it comes out I just had a thought you know thinking about the C15 you remember it here the actual mudguard stair tube went into an end <coughs> you know it wasn't this tube that was flattened I'm wondering if that was because it makes it a lot easier see when we make this we've got to make it measure it so that we get our flattened end here but if it was in two pieces and it's quite a long piece you see you make your flattened end and then you've got some play with the tube inside that could be the reason anyway let's go and bend our first piece oh hang on so it's about nine inches to the start of the bend nine and a half let's not forget we've got various things to take into account of the bend and I'd rather have it long okay it's eight and a half to there it's ten to out here so we've got a bit of leeway about where we put it if we make it and it, if it's slightly short we can uh, push it this way a bit if it's slightly long as long as it looks all right where we've got it but I'm thinking of literally something like that I had thought about doing it straight up and over on both sides with a piece but anyway let's bend up a loop to start with right I've got the half inch uh, doodad in there die in there and I mark this 11 inches from the end give myself plenty of space so let's see so that goes in there and we'll put our mark at what should be I would think the, roughly the beginning of the bend it's the front of the die I'm not quite sure how this works anyway this will be a good experiment won't it So that is there, let me clamp that up. And we're going to go 180 degrees. So let's see what we can see here. probably be good which pin goes in where oh no hang on this is different because it's got see the other ones I'll show you the bigger ones have these holes in for the pin to go in this die is so small it doesn't have them so how the devil does this work does it work on hang on let me think about this right well I don't know what I've done with the little instruction book so the only thing I can think to do, that one doesn't touch anything, I've raised this one up so that this is bearing on there. And I think probably with half inch tube we can just do this without the mechanical advantage of the ratchet thing. So I've got a bit of tube to go in here. Let's see what happens. Right, that's 160 let me move you slightly because you're getting in the way
Now, let me go and make a measurement about how far across it is to where we're going to bolt it. Right, it's six and a half inches if I mount these on the inside of the mounts, seven and a quarter if I mount them on the outside. Now then, don't forget, when we squish the ends, it's going to go in, well, only an eighth of an inch, actually, because this is half inch thick, so it's a quarter of an, well, it's not even an eighth, is it? No. It's a quarter of an inch from the inside of the wall, or a quarter of an inch from there to the centre, so when we squish that up, it's only going to move, it's just going to be an eighth of an inch in the middle, that's three eighths, it's only going to be three sixteenths, so yeah, it's barely going to be an eighth. But anyway, at the moment, so if we say to about there, that's six and a half. We can always spring it a little bit, so let's take this off and go and try it. Right, so as you can see, this is just that, say that quarter of an inch too wide. Now we could squish that in, but it would start to get a bit narrow for that. I don't want to do that. We could make a little cutaway. Again, I don't want to do that. So what we're going to do is we're going to open this out. I'll put it back on the bending machine when we've got it right so I can see how many degrees I've turned it around. And then here, this part we'll put in a little, little bend to bring it in all right so let me I should probably just do this Get closer There we go. Right, so that now fits on there. So, can you see the bottom of the fork? No, you can't. Hang on. Whoop. Ah, there you go. I should have just moved it down a little bit. right so what we're just going to do is about here we bend it inwards on both sides that needs to go a little bit more when it's at an angle so let me fiddle on with this and then we'll see about getting that right let's try to show you this that is the original mark right that's 11 it remember it was 11 inches so that went to the very edge of the uh, the die I put it in up to there and then I started bending it but look you'd think really that that's where the bend is so you've got to take that into account all right, let me put this back in so I can find out what this angle is. Right, I've laid this out here. Look, there's the centre. This white mark from the edge of here is where I want those to be. So I've set this so that three-eighths of an inch off at each end. So I need to bend them about there. I bend them in there. That should be all right now I can keep offering them up we'll mark that so we know where it is as well I'll put it in bend it a little bit then offer it up so let me do that right now I actually had to bend it here because you know I've got to be able to trap the end in that uh, fixture sort of thing so that was the closest I could get but I've just checked this on the bike and that's pretty good so let me do this other one in the same place 
All right. Bending it down here just, it looked awful. So I more or less straightened them out. I couldn't find a way to put it into the tube bender to bend it here. So this stuff, you know, it's 4130, it's reasonably springy. It doesn't deform that easily. So what I did was I put it in the vise and with a long tube on, I just bent it up at the top here. Just kept doing it a little bit at a time. And I think that that is about it. When these are squished up, they'll fit on the outside of there. They'll drop down more, so that will bring it up here a little bit. So that is going to be, all right, it's going to be about there. Which is going to be fine. So the next thing to do is to squish the ends. So what I'm going to do first is I'm going to go and play around, see if I can get that uh, forming tool to work a little better before I actually do these. Right. Look, flat. Flat. Nicely closed up. I don't know, can you see the end of that? Anyway, slightly convoluted, but what I did was I put this in and squished it up sort of till it was like that. Yeah, about that. A little bit uh, tighter than that. You can see the walls are just starting to collapse. Then what I did was I got a little bit of that. It's about, I don't know, 40 thou. The full width to go in there. In fact, tight. Then I heated that up, really hot, virtually to orange, put it in, squished it, and you can see, best as I can with this light in, there, nice and flat, both sides. So that will work. Right, so there it is with the ends trapped, fits inside. The reason I've fitted it inside is you see how this is sort of round and drilled off centre. The other side is perfectly flat. They were made for the mudguard stay, that strange thing to go on the inside. Oh, mentioning that thing that went up, uh, I had one comment about part, part of its purpose was to be um, protection for the sliders, for the stanchions, seeing as the stanchions are down here instead of safely up out of the way. Um, I mean, if need be, somebody could make one, but I'm not going to worry about it. It's not a trials bike. It's not going to be given that sort of uh, rough treatment. But anyway, that's on. It just needs holes drilling. And my centre mark is here. But I'll admit, they are not perfect. Or it is not perfect. This bending stuff and getting things symmetrical and the right length, not easy. Particularly when you have limited patience as I have. Anyway, so what I've got to do now is mark that hole, mark that on both sides, drill it out and then we'll put these uh, dinky little Allen, but what are they? I think they're five millimeter. Yeah, they're five millimeter bolts. So let me mark this and drill some holes. I have drilled those ends and put the bolts in. So what we're going to do now is make a little plate here <clears throat> which will get welded to this and that will be drilled onto there. Drilled and bolted onto there. I don't know whether one at each, only a small mud guard, I think one bolt hole at each end will be quite enough for this. Don't think we need two. Or I could put one at the front and maybe two at the back one at each side and that would triangulate it make it all strong enough I think actually that's not bad not perfect I didn't get the lengths quite right actually so I had to re-trap this and it's I don't know maybe an eighth of an inch different not enough to notice okay time for a toasted cheese sandwich with pickle lily Right now, next thing to do is I've made up a little piece which will get bronzed onto there. 
I'll drill it after I've bronzed it. Then there'll be one of these from the underneath. So we have the least amount of uh, stuff sticking down. And onto the top, what we'll do is we'll put a nice polished acorn nut like that. So let me bronze this on and then we can drill it. And uh, that's the front end finished. Right, so there's that all bolted on there. Could have made that slightly bigger. What I might do is run a bead of weld round it, you know, back it with a piece of copper and just make it slightly bigger. But anyway, that's all on. So now all I've got to do is make another one of these for the back. Right now, when I got this right, I put it back in the pipe bender to check. And that is actually 116 degrees. So that one I'll make to 116 and then I can just bend it in a little bit. But that's gone on, I think that's pretty good. Quite like that. I think the back one, uh, hang on. The back one I might make. Actually, it's not going to be much different of an angle, but the back one I'm going to put straight back like that, about there. I don't know if they should be symmetrical. Generally, the real one is right to the bottom and is about level. Because, of course, normally, if you look at the triumphs and the BSAs and everything, they don't only have the two front one, the front and the back one, but they'd have one, well, it'd be in the back here to go over. But I think that is going to be fine when we've got the back one on. So let me bend up another piece. Let's see. I'm going to make this one. Well, basically the same. Nine inches to there. Alright, let me go and do that. Alright, it's Saturday and I've had some very annoying days. Uh, Made a complete pig's ear of the second one of those stairs, and I don't have any more half-inch tube. Hold on! Those of you who noticed the yellow petrol tank on the bench, that's a TY175 that I was painting for a friend. I just sanded it back to bare metal for the third time. Everything has gone wrong with that, that's driving me crackers. I spent an afternoon on my hands and knees in the crawl space of the house repairing a water leak. So things haven't gone too well. But we have had some bits arrive. So here's our headlight. Now you remember this is six and a half inch. So that is six and a half inch. Well, this is only six and a quarter when it arrived. So hang on, let me zoom you in a little bit. Yep, come. I've made up a couple of eighth inch spacing pieces. So we will uh, that in there, that on there, and where is it? There's the hole for the bottom. There's one going in. Oh dear, oh dear. We've suddenly got a warm spell of weather. A little bit of a thaw, which of course is a, oh, come on. There we go. It's a complete pain because what it's done is it's melted the snow and the ice under it. So the water's laid on top and then every night it's freezing again. So it's even slippier than it was before. Right, so the other thing that came from this supplier, who is actually the chap here that sells all the Yamaha 650 parts, but he also sells Goodrich hydraulic brake parts so I can get bends and different lengths of tube and they're all the uh, uh, 
threaded type so instead of making up fittings they all just screw together right so that's that in and you may notice I bought a black one rather than a chrome one so that's giving you a little bit of a hint on the paint skin so that's just nice now look and I think that is gonna be where talking can you see it all and let me put this other light on there you go uh, just nicely there and I don't think that's going to be a problem now. I think that's going to be sort of see the sky enough. Anyway, we'll find out later on. Right, so I've got a, a light unit for this with an LED bulb in. So we'll put that in shortly. So what else did I get? Oh yeah, the brake parts. Thought I might as well put the light unit in. Finish that off. So that's in there. And as I say, I've got an LED bulb for it. Right, now then. Uh, where are we? Hydraulic bits. Okay, so as I say, they're all they're good rich ones, and they're all the type that that screw up. So I've got a thirty-five degree for that. I think I maybe should have got a ninety degree. Hmm. Anyway, where's all the bits? I've just put them down here. Right. Hang on. Okay. Sorry about this. The other thing I noticed, I didn't really get these, uh, when I was going through to find the various banjos and stuff, I found that you can get a brake light. It's built into the banjo bolt. So, we'll use doughty washers on these. Actually, I'm using doughty washers because I think this is a bit longer than the one that goes in this AJB, AJP master cylinder so they go like that oh I noticed that when I was putting the headlight in I had my shoulder in the way my apologies for, for that look I'm having thread problem I'm, what's the word thread challenged <laughs> because it doesn't help having that thing hanging out there we go Right, so that's going to go in there, like that. Yeah, I think definitely a 90 degree one would have been better. I hate having to buy, you know, sort of one of these. It cost me three times as much for the shipping as for buying that thing there. Then, these just screw on, which makes it very nice. You don't have to worry about crimping hoses. They make them in like, oh, just it. Couple of minute, couple of inch increments, so you can get. Yeah, I think that definitely wants to go more like that. So anyway, it's tightened up there. That is going to go through there like that. Well. Uh, could be all right. Uh, what's next? So the other end, let me move you a little bit. Okay, let me walk around. So I've got another 35 degree one for here. Uh, new banjo bolt. Actually it came with new copper washers. I don't know if it's long enough to use those dowdies because they're quite thick. Here we go again, look. Up, there we are. So that goes on there like that. Yeah, 35 degree, I think it's good there. Now, this of course has got to have some, uh, I can't just fasten it because it's got to be able to move as the suspension goes up and down. But I think, let's have a look. goes on there I'll make a couple of little clips hold it 
and then see that's got a bit of a curve in it so as that comes up it'll start to bow out that'll be fine right let's have a look at the back end hang on while well, I walk around again now I think the back end is going to be a little problematical because I don't want to stick that that would replace that banjo bolt I don't want that sticking up there like that that's going to look ugly no, let's see what it looks like round the other side. Right, ho. Oh, I think I'm going to put that in like that. And that would go in. Now, oh, come on. So. There we go. So it doesn't help I'm getting a twist in that I can't swivel that round because of this thing so I've got to... all right I'm going to have that round there. Actually, that'll be all right there. That'll just tuck round out the way. So that's going to be... Okay, let's have a look at all these Electrics World bits. The week continues. They've sent me the wrong one. They've sent me an ignition only one. I definitely ordered the one with the lighting coil because I ordered the power pack with it as well. <sighs> Alright, sorry, that's going to be all for this week. So, you stay safe and enjoy yourselves.